Honestly, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was a sophomore in college studying to become a civil engineer, and I had a difficult semester. A lot of classes uh, on my uh, plate. I was active on campus with a lot of different organizations, had some things I was dealing with personally. And I can remember I was looking at my classes and I said, you know what, this class I'm not doing well in. I need to withdraw before the deadline so I don't have to take a bad grade. I felt that it was a good plan. I know a lot of students that would uh, take that approach. And I remember going to a professor and telling him, I said, I'm going to uh, withdraw from this class. I know it's a prereq for this next class that I would like to take, so I'd, I'd like to audit it. I'm planning to audit your class. And he told me flat out that I could not audit his class. He told me flat out that I would uh, never become an engineer. And I remember when he said it, it was just so matter of fact, like there was no question about it, that uh, I was never going to become an engineer and I couldn't audit his class. And I was devastated to hear somebody say that something was impossible, to hear somebody uh, say that I could not do something and that I should stop and do something else. Um, I couldn't help but to feel defeated in a sense. And I, I realized that uh, there was a decision that I had to make. And uh, the reason why I felt that way is really because his voice. Uh, he said it in a way that was so matter of fact that it seemed like this is something I can't do. And as I started to talk to others that I trusted and uh, that I looked up to, my mentors, um, advisors, uh, friends, family members, I, I realized that there's power in the voice because they used the same voice and they were able to speak different words to me. They said, is this something that you really want to do? Do you really want to be an engineer? I didn't have any engineers in my family, but as we start to talk about what engineers do, I said, I like to draw. I love to draw. Uh, I love math and science. and I like to solve problems. They said, well, it sounds like if this is something you want to do, you got to find a way to get it done. And I remember the people that I was speaking to that, that used their voice in a special way. I realized that you, their voice, my voice, your voice truly does have power. I mean, with your voice, you could truly encourage somebody to move in a direction that they may feel like they can't go in. Uh, but you can also use your voice and you can discourage someone. So with this voice, we have to be very careful what we do with it. Thankfully, as you move forward in the story, I did do well in the class when I took it again. And I didn't take the bad grade because I did withdraw before the deadline. I did eventually take his class. I did very good in that class. And honestly, to this day, I don't even remember. Or I don't even know if he remembers uh, what he said. But uh, I want you to know that your voice truly does have power. And I believe that when we realize the power that's in our voice, we can truly unlock what I like to call authentic leadership. And with this voice, we're not talking about just making sounds, but we're talking about speaking in a way that speaks to the motivational value of the audience that you have in front of you. Now, each one of us is moved by a different thing. Some people, when it comes to, let's say, problem solving, since we're engineers, uh, there are some people that want to make sure that they get the right answer with great precision. There are others that really want to make sure that they get the win. You know, they want to win in the situation. Some people want to make sure that others around them are taken care of, while some people just want to make sure that there's consensus among the collective. So uh, the reality is that depending on how you're motivated, I could say something to you and it could completely discourage you. And I could say that same thing to someone else and it could be completely inspired and encouraged. So I think the right way to truly have authentic leadership and in using our voice is to do something that's almost seems too simple to even say. We have to listen. We have to listen. I believe that if we listen to one another, We'll get clues to what we need to say in order to move people to do more than what they're doing now, in order to inspire people or encourage people to affirm them. I think that to be a really good leader, yes, you have to be smart, but I think you have to listen. Yes, you have to be aware of what's going on around us in order to be effective, but I think that a lot of it comes down to not just caring about the people that we work with or the people that work for us, 
but having empathy. I mean, when we listen to one another, we can truly hear not just what people say, but what they don't say. And with this, I believe that we can truly have authenticity in the way that we lead. Looking out for one another is important. But when you talk about using your powerful voice is what we'll call it, you'll find that it's important to use your voice even when the people that you lead are not around. So when someone is, their name is mentioned and they're not in the room, you can use your voice to speak on their behalf. If there's something that is happening that really needs to be mentioned and nobody wants to be the one to mention it, you can use your voice to make a difference. And you're in a meeting and someone that might be less senior uh, makes a suggestion and everyone ignores them, you can use your mighty voice in order to lift them up so that others would understand what this person is trying to say. I found that I'm uh, very encouraged and very inspired when I speak with uh, folks that are not yet in the STEM field. They might be a young person that's, that's trying to understand what it means to problem solve. But I'm inspired as I talk with them because the reality is that at young ages, we believe that anything is possible. A lot of times we believe that nothing is impossible. And for whatever reason, as we become more senior or as we learn more, we start to put these ceilings up and believe that we cannot do certain things. But I believe that if we use our voice, the power of our voice, we can truly become authentic leaders that have the ability to set a good example, the ability to set a vision, the ability to provide stimulating work for the people that we are around. But it's going to require us to do some listening. It's going to require us to focus on others and the interests of others more than our own interests so that we can truly provide support and encouragement. And as we expect the best from one another, we could truly be inspirational. And I believe that, yes, as engineers, it's possible for us to be inspirational. Think about it. As we work to work on a project, is we're moving the soil around the site, we're truly transforming the world. And it may sound grandiose, but I believe that as leaders, we don't need to think about ourselves, but we truly need to care about others. And we truly need to listen in order to provide value in a positive manner. So when you, next time you're thinking about your voice, think about your voice as a powerful voice, as a powerful tool to make changes, positive changes. And yes, we're engineers, and yes, we like to calculate, and yes, we like to problem solve. But I truly believe that if we have the ability to provide negativity or to provide positivity, we could do more for ourselves and more for the world if we find ways to use our powerful voice to be authentic as leaders. And I believe that if we unlock this, we'll truly change the world. Thank you.